In this video, we're going to see a simple way to upload an image in Spring Boot. And actually, it's really any file, but we're going to use an image as a sample. So what we need is something called multi-part file, and then path, paths, and file, which come from a newer package in Java, Java 1.7, java.nio is the package. Also, we need to consider how to deal with exceptions. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm in our development environment now. What we're going to do is we're going to add a new form to the start page where a user can upload an image. I have the start page open in Eclipse, and what we'll do is right down here, I'll just say new form, and we'll say method equals post. Now in the world of microservices, post typically means we're creating something new. Now as a matter of fact, we notice I'm adding a new form after an existing form that I have. And eventually I'm going to combine these two forms together, but just to keep things simple right now, I'm going to keep them separate. When I do combine them together, I'm going to change the method type of the form to post because get in microservices really means we're reading something, post means we're creating something new. So a little divergence there, but nonetheless, that's where we're going to go. Now we have to say ink type, I haven't used this one before. Ink type equals, and then we're going to say double quote. Oh, I already have a double quote. So we'll say multi part slash, and on a US keyboard, that's the slash on the question mark key, form dash data, and then action equals, and then we'll give it a new endpoint of upload image. And we'll go ahead and close off this form, and I'm going to copy this upload image into my buffer because I know I'm going to need this or to my clipboard because I know I'm going to need that on the controller side when I add the endpoint mapping to the controller. So inside of this we'll say input type equals file and then we'll say name equals and uh, we can call this one image file or we could just call it file if we want it doesn't really matter. Okay after that we're going to say input type equals submit and then we'll say value equals upload, or you could call it upload image, whatever you like. And then of course, terminate the tag as we normally would. So that's all we need for a simple form. The next thing we're going to do is pop into our controller and handle this endpoint. Now we're in our controller, scroll to the bottom and let's just give this a simple method. We'll say public string upload image. Open and close print, open curly, close curly. Now let's map this to our post mapping endpoint. So we'll use post mapping, which is a shortcut for request mapping with method equals post. And inside of this, I do double quote, double quote. And inside of that, I simply paste the upload image endpoint that we grabbed from that form and copied into our buffer just a moment ago. Now, I don't like red lines. So let's go ahead and say string return value equals double quote, double quote, and then return return value. And that will take care of our red line for our missing return statement. Now comes the tricky part. What we need to do is we need to capture that information that is submitted to us from our page. So it uh, looks like the field is called image file. So let's capture that. We'll say multi-part file, image file. But we need to do a little bit more magic here. Uh, first of all, a control shift O will organize imports and bring in that multi-part file. And now we need to map this with the request param annotation. So at request param, and we'll simply say double quote image file, just like so, and close double quote. And I think we're good at this point. So what we need to do next is we need to save the file. So we already have our specimen service referenced here. We pulled that in way up above. Let's take a look. So you see specimen service on line 35. So we have that already auto wired. So I'm going to say specimen service dot save and let's pass in this image file. Now the save method does not exist. Let's say, let's call it save image or save photo. Save image will be consistent. So save image like so. Now this method does not yet exist. We're kind of drawing it out proactively. Let's see what happens when I put my mouse over that control one and let's go ahead and say create method and, and uh, interface I specimen DAO. So we're making this up now. Now we know that saving an image 
is going to require that we're doing something outside of the virtual machine. In other words, we're accessing the file system. Anytime we do something outside the virtual machine, there's a risk that things can go wrong, and that's typically when we need to deal with exceptions. So I'm going to go ahead and say throws exception on the signature. Reason being, can the service do anything if the save went wrong? Uh, limited, probably not a whole lot, uh, but the UI can at least log and inform the user. So we'll go ahead and say save image. And now you notice as soon as I do that, that my specimen service no longer compiles because we have changed the contract in the interface. But this is an easy fix. A simple um, control one, whoops, a simple control one will allow us to implement those methods. So control one, and add unimplemented methods, and there we go. We're also going to need to take care of our stub, uh, which is something that we made a while ago. As a matter of fact, at this point, we probably don't really need the stub anymore, so it, it might even be safe to take that away. But let's go ahead and fill in what we're doing here. So save image. Uh, for this, I'm going to go to, I, I, I'll tell you what, I eventually want to make a separate photo DAO. I'm not going to worry about that in this video because I just want to quickly show how to upload an image. So right now I'm going to go ahead and save the image, but eventually we'll come back and refactor this. We'll have the service layer call down to a DAO. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take away the to-do because we're going to start doing. Oops. There we go. And now we'll say string folder equals and then slash, uh, again, a slash on the question mark key on the US keyboard, slash photos, and then slash. And then next we're going to say image, whoops, we'll say, uh, tell you what, we'll put, we'll put down here image file dot get bytes. So get the raw data from this file. And that will be saved into a byte array. So control one here if you want. Sometimes that makes it easier. Assign statement to the new local variable. Or you can type that all out. You see, I just had Eclipse do a little bit of work for me. Okay, so we have a folder where we're going to save the image and we have the byte stream that represents the image. The next thing that we need to do is we need to assemble the location where we want to store the image. For that, we use something called paths, which is a newer class in Java 1.7. So paths.get, and inside of that, we'll say folder, plus, and then fi uh, image file, whoops, make that the right case, dot get original file name. So in other words, what's the file name that the user uploaded? We might want to rename this ourselves. Again, in a future refactor, we can do that. We might want to rename this so we don't end up with img001.jpg, which one person's overwrites another person's, or uh, temp1.jpg, where that's going to be a common image name. But nonetheless, we'll trust that it's going to be relatively unique right now. Once again, we can mouse over get control one, and we can say assign statement to new local variable, and that will give us a path where we can store the file. Finally, we use files.write. Again, files is a newer class in Java 1.7. And we simply say the path that we provided, the byte array, uh, at this point, not worried about options. One note is that we need this path to already exist. We could put some code in here to create it, but uh, for our simple example, why don't we just go ahead and create the path? And you see I'm using the slash and then photos, which kind of says start at root and then find the photos directory. So I'll go out to my virtual machine, C drive, and I'm simply going to make a new folder called photos. So our success criteria here is I should be able to upload a photo and I should see it in that photos directory. So a couple things. We will start the, oh, you know what? I, oh yeah, that's right. Sorry. I need to handle my exception here. So I'm going to surround with try catch and we'll say log dot error because we know that any time we have a catch block, we should really at the very least do some logging. So error saving photo comma, and then we'll use our e, uh, our exception variable, we'll pass into that, and we'll also return, change the return value to error. Now at this time we're simply doing a bit of debugging, uh, so my normal return value will just go right back to the start screen, nothing crazy there. Uh, so at this point we should have enough to go ahead and debug, I'm going to save, 
Uh, make sure I, I know I need to change one more thing, which is my specimen service stub. Uh, that's because the interface change. This is not so important. We'll go ahead and add the unimplemented methods. That's a class we're not really using anymore anyway. So, so we could make an argument that we could go ahead and remove that from our project. But nonetheless, we should be in fairly good shape now. So I'll restart our server and we'll give it a go. Okay, the server is now restarted, you, and I just paused the video for a moment so I could download a simple image. But uh, nonetheless, server's restarted. And you see now we have the Choose File option in the Upload button. So let me go ahead and choose File, and I will grab this red bud that I photographed in Cleveland. So uh, just about the right size image. So grab the red bud there and choose Upload. Now what we really want to see is we want to walk through this in the debugger and we also want to verify our success criteria and that is that we see this image in that photos directory. So I choose Upload. Ah, the breakpoint stops. That's naturally a good sign. We say go ahead and switch and specimen service dot save image. We can see, now this is interesting, we can see that this image file that we're receiving in this endpoint does have the name plant places image 20170906132741, which is the correct name of that file. So it looks like we did indeed get the file uploaded from browser to server. Now, one important note is that I, I, I added a caching annotation earlier that introduced a bit of aspect oriented programming, which means there's something that intercepts our call going from controller to our specimen. So it's not so easy to hit the step into because that gets in that AOP stuff unrelated to this video and I don't want to confuse the video. So what I'm going to do is from the controller now, I'm going to hit play and we get a little bit of funkiness here. And uh, that's, again, related to the AOP. You probably won't have that if you haven't done the caching annotation. But nonetheless, everything's fine because look where it picks up next. It picks up on our specimen service. So let's go ahead and step over this one line at a time. We see we have the folder. We have the byte array for our image. And finally, with any luck, we have the path. We mouse over the path and we see it's slash photos, slash plant places image, la la la. Let's double check that photos directory and confirm that nothing's in there yet and there's not anything in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and step over and for good luck, let's press play and let's go back and voila, look at what we have. So sure enough, this is not the image that I originally downloaded, but instead, this is the image that I've uploaded using aspect-oriented programming. And if you've ever been to Cleveland before, you might recognize where this is. This is on Public Square, right in the middle of downtown Cleveland, a redbud a common tree to find in the Ohio area. So at this point, we've successfully uploaded an image. What we need to do in our next video is display this image to the user and also in some following videos we want to record this photo and associate it with a specimen that we're creating. Don't worry about this error page. Uh, that's, you know, that's just the default return. But nonetheless, we want to uh, display the image to the user. Uh, sorry, we want to associate that image with whatever specimen the user is entering here. That way, as a user, I can manually enter the details of a specific plant that I have in my yard, latitude, longitude, description, and the plant name we know is an autocomplete that we put together earlier, even though I still have a breakpoint on that. And then we can add several images to that, and we can say that these images belong to this specimen. So we'll do that wiring up in a few future videos. I look forward to seeing you then, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.